you know when things are dire, when the most exciting reveals these last couple of days were Blade Master support cards, even though we had strides for the premium collection as well. Yeah, it's that bad. Stand up! Bangalo! Hey Grafados, welcome back to another extra edition of Cardville Update and today we've got five new cards to discuss as the last couple of days we got some new reveals for the premium collection and we've got new support cards for Blade Master. And on top of all that, yesterday was once again a YouTuber card reveal and this week was the none other than the courtesy of Different Fight with his unique and exclusive DP reveal. Who would have guessed? So if you haven't seen that review yet, then I highly recommend you guys to check out his card review as he will go in great detail of what the card can do and how it can be utilized with DP's arsenal to its full potential. But before that, stick around in this video as we go over the, all the other reveals that we got alongside of that and also give my two cents about the DP card itself. So we're going to start off with the new V-Series support that we got for the upcoming Silver Petal Dragonflame set. As we got two new cards for Kagero, which are pretty nice Blade Master support cards that will synergize with the current Blade Master. And who knows, maybe even with the upcoming Blade Master Soen. So without further ado, we start off with this great one that is Dragon Dancer Soya. And her ability is Auto Record Circle, when placed, costs Soul Bless 1. Return up to one Wife and Strike Doa and Wife and Strike Garen, each from your drop zone to your deck, and shuffle it. This unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn for each return card. So Doa and Garen are basically the most important cards in the whole Blade Master deck, as without those two cards, your Blade Master doesn't do anything. It doesn't do shit. Because. If you don't have those two in the field, you cannot field retire and you cannot create the vision token, meaning your blade master doesn't really do anything and your deck becomes vanilla. So having a great one that can now put those cards from the drop zone back into your deck so you can restock and refill your important cards, that's actually pretty good. As in some scenarios, you might have a Doa in hand, but not a Garen to search out because all of them are in your drop zone or your damage zone or whatever in your soul maybe that you cannot get to them. With this great one, you can actually put them back. And even though this card doesn't really do anything on the turn itself, as it doesn't blush you, it doesn't search out anything, it just put them back to deck, it is actually a very important card because those two cards are so important, you have the room to run a card like this that actually doesn't really do anything for your overall game plan, but just helps up the consistency for your other cards. And the fact that it gets an additional extra power is nice, as it can potentially get a plus 10k as you can put up one grade two and one grade one back into your deck. But the reason why this card is really good is thanks to the other grade two that's basically a grade two version of this grade one that makes this card and that card even better. As we have the grade two card Dragon Dancer Faya and her ability is continuous a rearguard circle. During your turn if your opponent has no rearguards this one gets power plus 5k. So this synergizes completely with Blade Master as Blade Master fields retires everything so if you do your thing what the deck wants to do it basically gets the additional 5k and makes it a nice 15k beater and that with the grade 1 is 23 that can potentially be 28 and 33 and then on the other side you have a Doha and a Garen which comes with a guard restrict and is also a very powerful column so suddenly you actually have really good grade 2s and grade 1s in Blade Master as the entire deck only had Do Doha and Garen to rely on but this isn't where this card ends because she gets even better as her second ability is Auto Vanguard and the Rearguard Circle when placed, look at the five cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one Wife and Strike Doa or Wife and Strike Garen from among them and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So now we have a searcher that pluses you for free. If in the top five you get the grade two or the grade one, you get a free card. That's really good. And with the grade one, Soya, you can restock your deck so you can increase the consistency of this card that you're going to hit those pieces. And you need those pieces because without them, as I explained earlier, Blade Master doesn't do shit. And of course, the card that you really, really want to hit is Wyvern Strike Doa because Wyvern Strike Doa itself can search out the Garen. So you can start getting pluses and filter your deck quite effectively through this way. And now that you have a way to search out these cards more consistently and you can reshuffle them back in your deck, you can be a bit more aggressive with these pieces as... 
typically you don't really want to slam Garen's onto the board in the early game if you don't have a Doha or you have a Doha but you don't have any more pieces in your deck as you then need to save them up for your turn when you go into Blade Master. And Blade Master's turn is a second grade free. So you need to wait quite a couple of turns before you can be aggressive or effective. With this restocking and this free searching, you can afford to be more aggressive with your cards and just put them onto the field and smack your opponent for high power and basically set up a death turn when you go into your full power blade master that feels retires and then also creates a vision token on top of that. So these cards are definitely a warm welcome for blade master and it is also nice that they have a really awesome nice artwork. The whole dragon aura flame thing around it is really nice and i think no blade master player is complaining about these skills and the artwork of these cards so yeah good you guys blade master is looking pretty lit but that's basically where the standard support ends as we got three new strides for the upcoming premium collection and there isn't actually a lot to talk about these cards as you're gonna see in a second because we're gonna start with the nova grappler stride as we have heteromorphic dragon king azadabalk or how that's pronounced as double and its ability is unknown vanguard circle when it attacks cost counter plus one and turn a card from jason face up and stand all of your front row rear guards this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the battle for each unit that was stand so on attack counter plus one you stand three units as you probably have an axle circle and it gets a plus 15k and you get three extra attacks for a counter blast that's not really that great yes you get three attacks off but what cards are you going to resend? We don't really have cards that will give us value of just resending them. As most of our standard cards don't really do a lot. They are more dependent on their Vanguard unit to do something. Like in God's Hand, for example, to up the front trigger power. But this card doesn't really do anything of that sort. So, And then if we go to the premium side, we much rather go with the Victor type of cards that then give more value to our Vanguard or at least our Stride cards like we've seen with Favorite Champ Victor or Winning Champ Victor or the Bustard Stride. This doesn't really do anything of that sort and just getting free extra attacks, which probably won't hit over defensive triggers, isn't really that great. It's basically a upgraded version, a Stride version of Sword Trooper Equitus or Incest Riser that we got in Standard. And both of those cards aren't really that great. They're budget cards. So this is basically a Standard Plus try that allows you to play with your Standard Support and up it into the Premium Landscape and into Stride Territory. But for the Nova Grappler Stride era, or at least in Premium what they already were doing, this doesn't really do anything for them. It doesn't give them an early game that they need as they already have Bustard or Winning Champ that are way better first tries, and then they have way better finishers in the like of Winning Champ or their GB8. And this doesn't really do anything for it. The only upside that this card has over all those other strides is that it doesn't need any setup or it doesn't really need any specific deck to build towards it. As with the whole Winning Champ or with Bustard, you're playing mostly the the victor cards that allows you to fill up the soul as they go into soul while multi-tech and resetting a lot of stuff so you can capitalize on the soul blast part and keep flipping cards in your g-son so you can accelerate to winning champ your ultimate stride or your gb8 so you're basically stuck to running specific cards that fuel that playstyle. this card doesn't really need anything of that it just needs front row units so you can stick this thing in any build for nova grappler and and it works so this is a budget alternative friendly card for Nova Grapplers. And I think that's the only application this card will ever have. Also, what's up with the artwork? This looks like a Xenomorph has a romantic interest with a blue eyes white dragon. And this came out of it nine months down the road. It doesn't fit with Nova Grappler at all. But the mediocre stride doesn't stop there. As we also got the stride for great nature. And... It isn't looking all that better, as we have Omniscience Dragon Chipchikam, and Chipchikam's ability is Unknown Vanguard Circle. When your card is put from your rearguard circle or deck into drop zone, you may put that card on the bottom of your deck. So this helps against going deck out, you would say, as 
all those melee cards that we have in standard then goes back to the deck or all those cards that kill themselves at the end of turn or whatever then it calls to go to the back to the deck that is true but what are you succeeding with this as it only works if this thing is on the vanguard circle so if this card doesn't win you the game then you basically are stalling for the following turn and is that good enough Probably not. This would have been a lot better if it was auto on Vanguard Circle and G Zone. So you can use this as a flip target so you can basically restock your deck with extra cards and keep the game going, especially with how draw heavy Great Nature is and with them killing everything off quite effectively. Also, a weird interaction where I don't know if people address this because cards that are put from the deck into Drop Zone can be put to the bottom of the deck. Cards like Isabel that then can draw them or Tank Mouse will conflict against this effect because you can either only draw them, get them to hand, or put them back into your deck. So with some cards this also conflicts and it doesn't really synergize all that ideally. Especially with if you mill a trigger you ideally want to put the trigger back but at the same time you want to get the trigger to your hand as an extra shield value and you're starting to get into an uh, issue here. But of course, this card has a main Vanguard ability that allows him to be offensive, as we have his second ability that's auto Vanguard Circle. When your rear guard attacks, cause Soul Blast 1 and turn a card from your G Zone face up. That unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the battle for each face up card in your G Zone, and at the end of the battle, retire the unit. So, we basically now see the G Zone acceleration card for Great Nature, where they can start flipping a lot of cards open where they might go into a Zoa turn or go into a very powerful Balur or maybe in their GB8. The only problem is, it just like what we've seen with Buster, it costs a lot of soul. And I don't know how effectively Great Nature actually can fuel that soul to start flipping a lot of cards and how you can build upon this strategy. Also, a problem with this card effect is, which will make it really annoying for Great Nature, is that it retires the unit at the end of the battle. Great Nature's retire abilities that you can stack up onto units activate at the end of turn, meaning this will conflict with that strategy and you cannot use your abilities of your Duckbill or Mika Saburo as those effects are at the end of turn. So you kill them off preemptively and you lose those searchers or those draws and that is a big problem. However, there is one interesting interaction that you can do with this card as we had the promo Otter that can't die of effects. So you can target it with this effect and you can swing with it, give it a lot of power and it will stay alive. So if we combine that with Crayon Tigers or with our Big Belly that is basically great for Crayon Tiger, you can keep resetting that Otter and give it more and more and more power every time as you start flipping more and more cards in your G zone so you can have a strong beater. But that is a lot of pieces you need to have that combo potential and I'm not so sure how great that actually is. It probably isn't that strong and will not see a lot of play. There are some niche interactions with this as I explained that it can flip a lot of cards in your G zone so you can accelerate to, to certain strides or certain effects. So it I think this card will have a bit more potential than a Nova Grappler Stride is. A Nova Grappler Stride is just a budget alternative and that's it. This card might see some play. And I'm also aware that there is some interesting infinite loop kind of play that you can do with this card. But if that's actually viable, I'm not so sure. But with Great Nature out of the way, let's dive into the big reveal card of this week as we dive into the Dimension Police Stride that Different Fight released to us yesterday. And this new Dimension Police Stride is Heat Wave Beast Gale Maglas. And Gale Maglas' abilities are Continuous of Vanguard Circle and G Zone. If face up, all your Great Freeze on Vanguard Circle and Guardian Circle get Power plus 5k, Shield plus 5k, and Intercept. This ability stacks. So that means if you go into this thing and you will flip its copy of himself with the second ability, so you have one face up in your G zone and one in your Vanguard Circle, it means all your Great Freeze get an additional 10k power, an additional 10k shield, and intercept. That's insane, as that makes your GP deck super tanky. As first off, you're starting to bash out a lot of power, as your Great Freeze on Vanguard Circle is starting to get beefy. And... 
also with the intercept you can place them there and still move them to the guardian circle if need be for next turn and with die liner in the mix that gives them even more shield value if you go back to your grade 3 once you stride out on your opponent's turn. So with Die Liner, they get an additional 10k. If you have two copies of this face up in Jizo, that's another 10k, making your grade threes as strong as V heal triggers. That's a lot of shield value you're going to get, especially with DP running an excessive amount of grade threes. But you can run four copies of this thing. Have them all face up and you're already starting to get more shield value while you start to do this thing. So it's not that unlike this thing that they can survive until the next turn. So if they go into this thing again and flip another copy, their great freeze will effectively be 30k shield. That's a lot of shield power as their great freeze are as strong as the brand new sentinel crit triggers. And they don't have to do anything for that. Yeah. This is going to be beefy. It's gonna, this is probably going to be a new tactic in premium where we're going to see a wall police that grinds the game to a halt. As I believe there are also ways to cycle Great Freeze from the drop zone back into the deck so they can basically start keep searching them out and do their thing and block everything while also bashing with high power. Because don't forget, if you have four copies of this thing face up, those great freeze in a rigor circle will hit for 33k without a boost and without a marker or whatever. They hit like a truck. But of course, this card is more than only defense options and powering up the great freeze on a rigor circle, as we also have a second ability, which is auto vanguard circle. When it attacks, cost counter plus one and turn a card from Jason face up. So this is what I meant with that you immediately can have two face up. Look at the seven cards from the top of your deck. Call the two cards from among them to the rigor circle, shuffle your deck, and this unit gets critical plus one until the end of the battle for each of your grade three units. So this gives the Mansion Police multi-attack. And it gives them a lot of crits on their Vanguard unit. That's really scary, especially if you go into this thing after a die liner turn that comes in with an additional crit. And because you're not really focusing on power on your Vanguard anymore, as there is no power restriction or whatsoever, and you're already going to power up your regards, you can easily go for force two. Meaning this thing by natural will probably swing a triple crit. Your die liner will probably have swing a triple crit, if not more. And this thing can even be more crits if you call a couple of great freeze. And you're probably going to do that because there are going to be powerhouses with a lot of shield value. And because you check out the top 7, you can call even more great freeze from among them and give your Vanguard even more crits. But that's pretty scary. Also, this thing is ironically the support card that I was hinting at at the previous card for the update. When I went over the new grade 2 for Dimension Police, Die Dumper, that could retire itself at the end of the battle. And I thought, well, maybe we get something that could utilize the way that something gets retires mid-battle or something is sent to the drop zone. I was mainly hinting towards the support for standard. I had no idea that they would get a strike that can utilize on top of that, as you can call it die dumper, attack with it for 20k, it retires itself, then attack with the vanguard, and then call a new unit on top of the open rigor circle on the front row. This way you can multi-tag without calling on top of your units, which is basically more efficient way of utilizing your cards. And also another card that interacts quite nicely with this is of course you can go for Dysaurus. Sure, it doesn't give you the extra shield value on your grade three as you're putting it into the soul, but because you put it into the soul, you open up a spot for the new units to call. So you can synergize this with a lot of interesting cards within Dimension Police. And also another thing with Die Dumper is, that card on its own, if you ride it, also gives your Great Freeze an additional 10k shield. So you can go into a Die Dumper, that gives you extra shield value. Then you can go into the Liner, which gives you extra shield value. And then you can go into this thing and stride a couple turns. So basically from turn two and onwards, if you can ride into a Die Dumper, you're starting to get very, very beefy. That's all your great freeze or shield value, and it will only give you more and more and more value as the game progresses. So, yeah, with all the other defensive options, there are quite of interesting things you can do for DP with this. As you can go a defensive route, you can go a very great free heavy offensive route, you can go for multi attacks, you can go for some lore shenanigans, and many other plays that you can make. And I highly encourage you to check out different fights uh, review video. I will put a link on top here as. You will go into much better detail about this card as there are many more interesting things and many more details that will make this card 
pretty good for the DP as it opens up a lot of interesting options and also fixes some inherent problems of older cards or just the way how the clan functioned previously before this card was revealed. But that's basically everything for this card reveal. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of all the new cards that we got. The new support cards for Blademaster as well as the questionable stride for Nova Grappler with the whole blue eyes Cedomorph and of course the great nature Chipchakam that might or might not actually see some play and the last reveal that we got the DP card reveal for different fights as it's not a mech it's also not a heroic justice robot it's a monster it's almost something like a dragon but apparently it's an alien but a very interesting alien but let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions. And as always, guys, this video has been brought to you by our lovely Patreons over at Patreon.com. Since so Fanget Insider, you guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to Patreon.com slash Fanget Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timely, and I'll see you guys in the next one.